Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining today. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com, and we're here for a session all about EDI and e-commerce integration uh, for Dynamics GP users. Our presenter today is Dave Malda of eBridge Connections. It's great to have him with us uh, for the first time here. And uh, as we get started, please know that uh, we do hope to make this an interactive session. You should see several different poll questions throughout the session. Uh, asking for your input so that uh, so that Dave has some guidance and also we'll be leaving time for questions at the end. You can enter your questions at any point throughout the session. Right, look for the Q&A block you should see to the right of the main presentation area uh, and feel free to enter those as we go. So without any further delay, I'm going to uh, hand things off to Dave Malta to get us started. Dave. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Jason, and uh, it's it's my pleasure uh, everybody to uh, host this today. I, I hope that uh, you find it informative and what we've done is we've tried to, to distill it down into uh, a couple of different uh, slides with some, as Jason mentioned, we uh, would like it to be interactive. We do have uh, several polling questions that are going to come up as well so that uh, people can contribute uh, that way and then we'll also have uh, a Q&A session uh, towards the end of the uh, of the slides as well. So, um, by all means, feel free to uh, to offer those questions, and then again at the end we'll uh, we'll serve those up and and I'll answer them uh, for everybody. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So again, this is really meant to show uh, the universal integration that eBridge offers. Um, you know, into in this case GP. Uh, and I'll share with you kind of the different processes and then also some tips and uh, common questions that come up uh, with regards to, uh, to integration. So a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Dave Malda. I've worked here uh, at eBridge for about eight years. Um, you know, it's, a, it's really a, it's a fantastic space uh, to work in. There is a lot of moving parts, uh, probably as most of uh, the people that are listening to me know. And, uh, and it can be challenging. It can be some, some awesome challenges, uh, you know, that, that we run into where people are looking to push data from many different sources, uh, whether it's an e-commerce uh, platform, it could be an EDI trading partner, or it could be, a, you know, maybe a Salesforce.com or a Dynamics uh, CRM uh, source. So uh, lots of challenges, but certainly a very imperative part of the process where this data meets, needs to make its way uh, back and forth in a timely manner uh, to keep things moving forward for a business and to be able to do it uh, effectively and efficiently so that uh, you know, you're not scaling, obviously, with people manually entering in data, but you're scaling with a platform that's on a schedule that just wakes up and runs. So, uh, again, I'm, I've been here for about eight years. I work with, uh, primarily with the sales team and, and fairly heavily with the market, uh, marketing team as well with uh, Lindsay and team who Lindsay will be jumping on later on in this, um, uh, in this presentation. So uh, with, without further ado, I'll get started. And, and uh, by all means, if you have questions, let's, uh, let's just put them, I believe, in the, there's a Q&A box or a chat box that you can uh, share them with. So we have actually a, a poll coming up. Um, right now, and uh, I'm hoping that everyone can see this on their screen, and it really is, uh, you know, enough about me. I'd like to know a little bit about everybody else that's listening, so it'd be fantastic if, um, if we were able to find out kind of who's on the line today. Uh, are you uh, an end user perhaps looking uh, for integration, uh, maybe not satisfied with your current uh, integration or looking to plug in something new? Are you, a, are you a VAR, maybe a value-added reseller that, uh, that, that works with the dynamic suite or particularly with, uh, with GP? Or perhaps you're a, an e-commerce agency that, um, you know, that's putting in uh, e-commerce platforms, and I'll, I'll get into this a little bit later, the ones that we support, but uh, you know, that might be uh, one, although I just see the results here and it looks like there are no uh, agencies at the moment, which is, uh, is surprising, actually. I, I, um, you know, I know the bulk of our business can be uh, e-commerce related, and obviously, so here, I'll, I'll look at the results here. We've got, uh, oh, it just disappeared on me there, but it looks, there we go. So it looks like end users, 43%, uh, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, VARs, uh, 43%, and then uh, web agencies, we'll, we'll get them next time. 
and uh, other we've got about 14 percent. So thank you very much, everybody, for uh, for filling that out. That's helpful. Um, so here are the things that uh, you know that I'll be going through uh, on this webinar. It's really it's it's how to uh, simplify the seller process uh, with universal integration. The key here is universal integration. I'll touch on that a little bit. Um, then what is GP integration? Uh, you know, fast and, and accurate order processing, and then uh, the, really the meat of this will be the kind of the top five questions that uh, that GP users ask about integration. They're ones that we get all the time, and uh, you know, I'll walk you through what those are, and then of course I suspect there will be some others as well. So, so uh, here here's the the buying process, if you will. I mean, typically a customer is. It's coming to your site. You've done some marketing, hopefully. You've driven traffic to your site uh, in this example. And, um, you know, you're excited. I think the person buying is excited. Um, you know, how, how, so they click buy, and then, and then really what, what happens, right? What happens, uh, you know, after that? Well, we, we all know in the, definitely in the e-commerce space that uh, folks, are looking to, at least I know I do this, uh, I will order something and then immediately I'm looking for uh, the tracking number. So, you know, I'm, I'm not always mindful and I think others are not always mindful of what actually has to happen in order for this process to work in a timely fashion. There are certain steps that need to happen. There's maybe uh, data that needs to make its way down into uh, GP. That data needs to make its way to a warehouse so that they can pick, pack, ship, and label the item. There's a lot of different intricacies and things that go on behind the scenes that most people are not aware of. And of course, that's where we, uh, where we can help out. So again, inputting the item, uh, I think you know, end users on the line are probably familiar uh, with the uh, manual entry. So you know as you get more successful and as your clients are uh, starting to buy more, whether it's B2B or B2C, uh, you know that as you hit a threshold, we, with us it's typically 200 to 250 orders per month, there's a pain there, there's a need to get this uh, data integrated. Um, often we'll come into situations where we can find uh, you know, folks that have maybe one or two full-time people that are keying things in. and. Uh, it, it, it's interesting to see the success happen, and then there can be a little bit of a trip up on uh, how much data actually needs to move back and forth. And if you're copying and pasting that, I mean, as we all know, there can be uh, errors and things that uh, get missed, people get sick, things get delayed, and um, that customer experience starts to become not as, uh, as pleasing to the person that's buying the product. So. Now I have another uh, poll question coming up. I know this is a, a GP, um, you know, this is a GP uh, webinar. However, I thought it may be interesting to, to ask what, what accounting packages are folks using? I'm sure there's people on here that are maybe not using that. Uh, they might be using the new Dynamics 365. Uh, so I thought that would be a, a valuable question to, uh, to ask folks to see what is everybody running um, what accounting package or ERP do you have that uh, that needs to make the that needs to have the data put in uh, back and forth? So we'll just we'll wait a couple seconds here for the results, but uh, we have a couple here. Obviously, GP is is uh, is A there, and then we've got NAV, AX, uh, SL, which we see a, a bit of here at eBridge, and then Dynamics 365, uh, both operations and for financials are. Are two that are coming up. So, okay, as as expected, this is this is great. 89% uh, GP and then 11% other. So, uh, thank you everybody for sharing that. It's interesting, um, you know, to see. I'm I'm glad that it's so focused. Actually, this is great. So, what is GP integration? What, uh, you know, what does it all entail? Um, what are the, the different components? What are the different pieces? Well, uh, we do have actually a, a takeaway from, um, you know, from this uh, webinar, which everyone will get the link to, but it's, we, we had written earlier in the year uh, an e-commerce specific integration 
uh, guide for dummies. And it's a, a very thorough uh, a guide, but basically what it'll walk through is how you can hook up your online store, your marketplace, whether it's eBay or Amazon, uh, your CRM, whether it's Salesforce.com or Dynamics CRM, and all of your EDI trading partners. It's a very exhaustive guide. Uh, it's one that Lindsay uh, helped us put together with uh, the help of uh, the 60 people, 6-0 that we have here at eBridge. There's an, a lot of knowledge here, and it's basically been packed into this uh, booklet. Uh, so again, everyone will get the link at the end of this, uh, of this webinar. So, to reiterate, uh, the, the unique piece on eBridge is really we've been, uh, you know, doing EDI integration for about 23 years. Uh, so our experience and our roots are are in that space. But then over the last eight to nine years, we've branched out to e-commerce, and you can see a couple of. Uh, points there, Amazon, uh, you know, fulfilled by Amazon FBA, and then there's also the uh, non-FBA, which is fulfilled by the uh, merchant. There's Shopify, Shopify Plus, uh, WooCommerce, and again, these are just some of the uh, different things that we uh, support through our platform. We'll basically take the data from each of these sources, and we're going to normalize it on our platform, and then we push it down into, uh, into GP. Uh, of course, there's, there's many different versions of GP that we support, and I'll show you a handy tool uh, right here that can really help you um, find out if we support your version or not. So for the end users there, uh, again, this tool will be helpful to find out if a spe specific version is, is supported. And for the VARs out there as well, uh, you know, you can call us by all means, but this tool will help you uh, you know, take a look at does eBridge support a particular version of, of GP or any other uh, accounting package for that matter. So um, we'll share the URL uh, with this. I believe it's eBridgeConnections.com slash blueprint. That will, you can also get to it from the home screen. There's a uh, try our blueprint button, a blue button just above the fold, and that will drive you to this area here. So what's going to happen is a few things. You'll see uh, you know, I'd like to integrate, and it's got a type, and I'll walk you through that in a moment, with, and then that's really the source. So what is the accounting package? What GP version are you integrating to what source, whether it's EDI or it's e-commerce or it's CRM? So selecting these drop-downs is going to present you with, in this case, we've shown a, a GP sort of fly-out, but you'll see there we've got a couple of inbound and outbound touch points that we currently support. These are, we, we call them touch points, and it's really a pre-built um, uh, touch point that supports standard uh, fields and tables in GP. So here you can see on the inbound, for example, we've got an inbound sales order. It's the fourth one down. So what that defines is eBridge has built over the course of the last 23 years, these touch points for each version of GP that out of the box will be able to, to hit, right? On the other side, we've got Magento. So most of you will know that's an e-commerce platform. An example here might be we're going to take outbound orders from Magento and we're going to place those into, in this case, Dynamics GP as a sales order. Out of the box, eBridge has these touch points available, and the intention for that is obviously to, it's a few things, but it's to help uh, deploy the solution faster. It's not a new build every time for us, uh, you know, unless there's customizations, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the webinar, but unless there's customizations, which, which there typically is, uh, we can get you there fast. 80% of the way with the standard touch points that are in GP. You'll see there's a, there's a, a bunch of touch points here. This is a very um, a robust adapter for us. We've been doing GP for a long time. Uh, we're a Microsoft Gold partner. And this is really a, culmin a culmination here of, uh, you know, really 20 some odd years of, of touch points. So, uh, again, very exhaustive and a lot of experience in GP. Some of the examples here, you'll see there's a, 
Um, there's some ASN references, so you can see there's some on the outbound, there's an outbound advanced shipping notice. Again, that's, if you're familiar with EDI, uh, you know, that's a, an EDI term. Um, in this case, we're looking at e-commerce, but uh, again, the, the intention here is to give you a tool so you can see if eBridge supports something or not. If it's not on this list, by all means, reach out because there's typically a, uh, you know, either we can build it or there's a way that, um, you know, we can, we can work with you. Now this is, I'll just back up for one sec. There's, there's a small I uh, icon right beside, if we look at our inbound sales order, there's a small I there. And in fact, each touch point has that small I beside it. If you were to select that I, you're going to be presented with this screen. And this is intended to, this may be helpful for the VARs and, and often can be helpful for the end users as well. Uh, it, it really shows the field level detail that eBridge supports. So it's handy when uh, some folks don't want to peel the onion back uh, that, you know, extensive. Others do. Others want to say, hey, listen, my client has these fields on the customer card. Do you support them? you can literally drill down on this tool to see if this is something that, uh, that eBridge supports. So again, just a handy way to, to find out kind of the depth um, out of the box that eBridge supports. So. Excellent. So um, by all means, if there's questions, please do, do put them in the, in the Q&A box or, the, uh, or in the chat box, and, and Lindsay and I will be happy to, uh, to help answer those. So. So next, I was going to walk through, uh, you know, the order process, right? So uh, really what happens when an order comes from a different uh, platform? Uh, what are the different triggers that need to happen in order to uh, be able to process this data properly into GP and then back up to, uh, in this case, we've got a web store. So again, this is a, a client of ours, uh, Everlast. You, you probably would recognize them. They're, they're a fairly well-known brand. Um, they are currently using our solution for uh, Magento integration. There's some EDI integration as well that they're doing. But uh, in this case, we'll show the, the Magento uh, side of things. Uh, someone's going to come in. They're going to order some gloves. And what will happen is our system our integration platform is going to pull on a 5 to 15, one five minute interval. It's basically going to pull the website to see if there's any net new orders that uh, have, have appeared in the last 5 to 15 minutes. It will, in this case, pull down any open orders um, that need to be shipped. So you can see on the left-hand side, we're looking at the website, someone's placed an order, and then that information gets put into uh, the the e-portal. The, the screen's a little bit smaller there, but uh, I think the illustration is good. It really shows it's an area that folks are going to go to not often. Uh, you don't need to spend your time in there. It's on a scheduled basis. But folks that are running into maybe a challenge where an order didn't get processed properly for uh, various reasons and maybe needs to be reprocessed, you would head into this uh, area of the platform online. It's, a, it's an online platform. You'd log in there to see where things are at. And there's certain statuses um, that are going to show up. There's pending, there's shipped, there's a few other key statuses that can be quickly identified uh, by yourself or the end user to see if things are actually moving uh, properly the way they should. So, so it will, that data will be held there. I believe it's 30 or 90 days. It does get archived after that. Um, or if you wish, it can get completely removed as well. But it will show up in this system. And then in this case, we're showing the inbox. We've got the order that's come down. They have uh, thousands of orders in a given month. Well, this will get processed down into uh, GP. Now, depending on the version of GP you're running, uh, there's two, there are two products. One is eBridge on the cloud, which is really just a small uh, utility that uh, will sit on, that will reside on the server where, uh, where GP is hosted. Or there's a, we do have for an older version of GP, if you're running a, a much later version, uh, we do have a, a, we call it a bridge install 
that gets installed on premise and that helps with uh, all the different components, the mapping and the data translation, et cetera, that happens. So in this case, the order is going to get passed into GP and then we're going to, uh, we can work with the client to uh, get those orders to a 3PL or if they're drop shipped or if there's, uh, you know, an internal warehouse, um, you know, that's being used. We can work together either sending 940s or 945s to and, to and from the warehouse. Uh, in some cases, it's already set up and not needed, or they may have access to GP and they're able to just see the pick list. So what we're illustrating here is we've got the order picked, packed, and shipped. There's a label that's been uh, put on the box. And then, again, on a 5 to 15 minute interval, 1-5 interval, our portal is basically going to wake up and pull any shipped items back up to our platform, including, in this case, the shipping details and the tracking number. And then that will, in turn, make its way back up to, in this case, it's the Everlast, uh, uh, you know, account for the customer so they can see that their package has been uh, shipped. And obviously that helps keep, uh, you know, the customer uh, at ease knowing that things have been shipped. So, so the, the, the last thing I'd like to touch on is the top five questions that we, that we typically get uh, from GP users or even just users in general that are looking, uh, you know, to, to integrate their systems. And so I'll walk through those, those now. And again, if you have any questions or if there's something here that uh, you don't see, by all means, please do ask. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but I, I think the, the order volume is something that uh, really determines if, if integration is, is needed or not. So uh, for an online store, for an e-commerce platform, it's, we see anywhere from 200 to 250 orders in a given month is, is really, uh, you know, is really something that um, triggers people to say, listen, I, I can't keep up here. I can't scale with people. I need to get a solution that's automated that I can set on a schedule that regardless of the time of day, it's basically going to pull and, and keep things moving forward uh, to and from, uh, you know, the source, whether it's EDI or whether it's e-commerce or CRM, into GP and back and forth. So on the e-commerce side, it's typically 200 orders to 250. I would say on the EDI side, as most of you know, if you've done uh, you know, if you've done EDI or if you've been requested to, to do EDI, you know it's really not an option. There's a couple of ways. If it's low volume, there's a few ways where you can perhaps get a web form solution. Um, you know, if you're doing a couple of orders a month, it doesn't necessarily need to be integrated and can probably uh, be handled manually. But again, if those trading partners start ordering more and that volume goes up, uh, then you're going to run into this same issue where uh, you simply can't scale uh, properly, so you need a platform. Um, again, there's a few other points here, so I think scaling your business across multiple channels is one that we are seeing uh, every day. There are new uh, folks coming in requesting new marketplaces in the e-commerce space primarily that they're going to be selling on, and um, you know, it might be Jet.com, it could be Amazon, it could be eBay. Uh, there's some that we have not heard of. It could be, uh, you know, Alibaba. There's, there's really a, a lot of um, uh, different types of marketplaces that we run into, uh, you know, over the course of a business day here. So that's a key one. eBridge can really handle any channel or marketplace or EDI trading partner that needs to be plugged in. So there's an advantage there of not having to uh, maybe run two or three different systems in order to kind of accommodate all of the different data sources that, um, you know, that you might need to incorporate into, into GP. So again, that is a key one and one that, uh, that obviously we don't take very lightly here. So. Cost. So uh, probably the end users are maybe thinking, uh, what, what is the cost? That's, that's a question that uh, obviously comes up a lot. Um, there, there's a couple of different components. There's really two different components to an eBridge uh, solution. And, and really it is this way. So I had, I had talked about a touch point uh, earlier. I had walked you through the blueprint and shown you the different 
pre-built touch points that, uh, that we support. We have an annual fee that gets charged for each touch point. So as you add a touch point, in, in the case of the Everlast example, uh, let's just say they're running a five touch point solution. Um, you know, you're looking at anywhere from 1000 to say $1,200 uh, for a touch point. Again, that's to run uh, annually for the year. Then there's a second piece, which is the services. So we have a team, we have several teams here. I believe there's five teams of three that deploy our solutions. So um, as we move to the kickoff state and we have a project where we're doing some integration between systems, we're going to include a project manager and we're basically going to have those folks map and deploy uh, the different services that are needed in order to uh, connect the different systems, whether it's EDI uh, trading partners or it's, it's e-commerce. So um, there's really two components. It's simple. However, uh, there are customizations often that can be surfaced as we go through and we scope the job, and we would treat those obviously separate outside of uh, what you're seeing here. So uh, having a full understanding of what pieces are, are you know, are, are, are require eBridge uh, is sort of imperative as we, have, as we go through the sales cycle. And there's a couple of different ways that, uh, that my team is able to uncover that information. Um, you know, it's through technical calls. There's typically a few technical calls, and then there's also uh, a demo uh, that we typically provide where, again, if there's multiple people involved in this process uh, at a particular company, which there typically is, you can, uh, each person can kind of raise concerns or say, well, we do it this way. We use SalesPad maybe. Uh, there's a few different things that, um, that we'll learn as we go through the, the cycle, and obviously that will, that does impact the price. So the next question, the next most popular question would be, how long does it take? So uh, I, I would say in my experience here over the last eight years, what, what I've noticed is when there's a point of contact at the, uh, the company where we're doing the integration, that can really expedite things. And here's why. Um, our service people are going to have questions that, uh, that come up over the course of the deployment. And the speed to getting answers to those questions, the speed to maybe getting credentials or even access to, uh, to the different platforms so that we can start to move the data back and forth is key. Often delays can happen in that process if there's nobody on the other end that really is sort of leading the charge with the project. So that, that really is a key one. And when we have that, uh, you know, it, it, it can be relatively straightforward depending on, again, customizations or even touch point uh, level. If you're running a six or an eight touch point uh, solution, the, obviously the deployment timeline can get a little bit longer. But if it was a three or a four touch point solution, you know, and we have a point of contact uh, at the company, sometimes you're looking at a two to a four week uh, turnaround. It can be relatively fast and the revs you know, the reps can be short. In an EDI case, uh, you know, most of you that have, have done EDI are familiar with the testing window and sometimes you can, there can be some delays from the trading partner where you're waiting on a testing window. Maybe you do a test, right? We send a test over. Uh, if there's certain issues and it needs another rev, again, sometimes there's a, a new testing window. So you can be, those things can play factors in uh, the deployment and how long the deployment takes, but uh, having a main point of contact, I've found, is, is really key, and that's, that's uh, feedback from the team that I work with here. This is really, this question is, is more about uh, do we, so how does our solution work? Does it quote unquote sit outside or is it really bolted on into GP? And, and the answer to that is it does sit outside. Uh, there are some advantages to that. Um, it, 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 it's a small service in the, in the case of our eBridge on the cloud uh, utility. It really is just a small service that sits on the outside. Uh, or in the case of our, uh, of our bridge that sits on premise for older versions of GP, uh, it is an install, but again, it sits on the, on the outside of GP. So nothing is really augmented or changed um, you know, in, in GP per se. So uh, I know that question does come up a lot during the sales cycle, and 
uh, it can be one that um, you know where folks are more comfortable with it sitting on the outside. So, um, and then again, just a, a little bit on the the inner workings of how the bridge works. There are different business rules and this business logic uh, that that are in the different components that we deploy. So things like selling uh, eaches online, but or maybe cases online. Sorry, you have cases online, but you have eaches in GP. Uh, those different types of um, of transformations of data would happen uh, through these business rules. So. So this would, we have it as number five, but this uh, often can be a, you know, a very early question that gets asked and, and it's one that uh, I think is key. As people are deploying, what we're finding is uh, folks will start out with a, a bit of a smaller implementation where maybe we're doing one or two touch points. Uh, it may look something like this where, uh, you know, they've got magenta orders, they've hit a maybe a 150 or 180 orders per month and they really just want to get those orders down in a timely fashion so they can get them to the warehouse. Some people will start with a one or a two touch point solution. They may start with bring the orders down and then let's have the tracking number go back up. The great thing with eBridge is you can bolt on different touch points relatively easily after the fact. So uh, again, people want to keep low risk, they'll run the solution. They'll run it with two touch points. Once they're happy, they're going to say, listen, uh, you know, eBridge, can you add inventory quantities to this, please? Or I have another uh, trading partner I need to bring on board. Can you please add this trading partner? Or I have another platform that I'm selling on. We're currently testing Amazon uh, FBA, and I'd like to add that as well. So easily adding those is, is a relatively key uh, component to selecting eBridge. And, we, you know, we've got it highlighted in red here. It is universal, and that means really we can plug in all of those different sources, and nothing really changes down on your GP. We're really just bringing in new orders from uh, different sources, for example. So, again, if there's any questions, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat box. Uh, happy to, to answer those. This really is, again, just reiterating the point that multiple, you know, multiple sources going into, uh, into Dynamics GP. We'll send this to you after uh, it is the, the uh, integration, the e-commerce integration dummies book that I had mentioned. There's the link to it. Uh, so feel free to copy that right now, or uh, I believe Lindsay's going to uh, send that after uh, the webinar is over as well. This is a little bit about eBridge. I mean, I've sprinkled in and through this webinar kind of who we are and what we've done and how long we've been around. But uh, it's important, I think, to pause here. Uh, you know, we're not a startup. We are not uh, new to this business. We've been around for a long time, since 1993. A uh, lot of experience in uh, the Dynamics suite in Microsoft, for example, and in particular GP. Uh, we do have 60 employees here, 60, and they're all in-house. So nothing is, is outsourced. It's all built and maintain and support it here um, at eBridge. And, and why that's key is I can, you know, Lindsay and I interact obviously daily. I interact with all of the departments daily and you're literally just walking down the hallway here. So uh, I, that's, that's a real key in this business because uh, we're, we're sitting in the middle of two production systems and uh, speed to either a fix or speed to deployment is important and we find it works best when we're all here uh, within these four walls. So uh, you'll see on the blueprint there's a point there that says universal connector for over 40 accounting packages and ERPs. That's really that blueprint builder. That's something that uh, we'll follow up with the link for that as well and it's on our main, main page there. You'll see it on the right, uh, try our blueprint builder. But that will show you the breadth and the depth that we uh, currently support. We have over 600 uh, businesses on our platform. There's a few, uh, we have some case studies and obviously a few folks that we're working with in the uh, different tiers. You know, we have some uh, smaller businesses that are, that are selling online, that are selling on Amazon. Uh, we also have some mid-market uh, businesses, uh, you know, that are, that are also selling online and doing EDI. And then we've also got uh, some larger companies like uh, an Etel Pasta uh, or John Deere as well. So. 
here's just a sample of, again, all of the, the different EDI trading partners, marketplaces that we support, and then again, some of the uh, different ERPs and accounting packages that we support. So, so at this point, I, I'd like to uh, pass this over to Lindsay, and uh, we, we did have a couple of questions come in, which is fantastic. I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to answer those, and, and I'm also happy uh, to obviously after the webinar, if there's any questions that come up or as you kind of debrief and, and have this information kind of sink in, uh, I'm happy to help. I've, I've got my email address here uh, as well. Um, so Lindsay, I'll, I'll pass it over to you uh, for those questions. Great. Can you hear me all right, Dave? Absolutely. Crystal clear. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks again. And hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Hampson. I'm over at, in the marketing department at eBridge. I'm sitting just down the hall from Dave. Um, it's nice to see some familiar uh, names on the line and some new ones, too. So uh, there's a bunch of questions. I'm going to ask four or five, depending on the time here. I've got another 10 minutes or so. All right, Dave, here's the first one. It's, um, it's do you have any customer examples? Yeah, yeah, great question. So I, I, I walked through a, a few there, but, um, you know, I, I would say there a, a really good example is one that, uh, and not that the other ones weren't really good, they were. This one is fantastic in the fact that they're doing uh, multiple, you know, 20-plus EDI trading partners. There's some warehouses involved, and then there's multiple uh, e-commerce platforms they're selling on. It's a company named Corvin. Uh, great, great company. They, they uh, basically sell a pour-by-the-glass wine adapter. It sits over top of a, of a wine bottle, and you're able to basically pour a glass and then put that wine bottle, bottle back on the shelf and not spoil it. So they have this, uh, this, this, this uh, little product that does this. It's, it's really cool. And so they've gone from being a smaller kind of a startup company a couple of years ago that had a Magento site and then was starting to sell into uh, Bed Bath & Beyond and there was a few other uh, trading partners they were selling to. And they've really gone global. So they were in the U.S., they went to Canada, they went to Quebec, they went to, uh, they, I believe they're now over in Asia. They've really ballooned and eBridge was able to uh, basically manage all of the, the different data sources that they've passed to us. So. Uh, the name again, it's Corvin, and they've got uh, they've got a Magento Enterprise, a couple of um, uh, different Magentos they're running. They have an Open Cart that they're running, which is an e-commerce platform, and then they also have, I believe, it's 15 to 20 uh, EDI trading partners. So uh, it it really kind of brings home the again the universal connector, so the ability for eBridge to pull from multiple sources, and then kind of the fourth thing they do is. They also have uh, a bunch of warehouses that are uh, sprinkled throughout uh, the world as well, and we're able to send 940s, 945s, and different information to uh, to those different uh, uh, locations. So, great, thanks, Dave. I'm going to put a Corvin wine opener on my birthday list. It's coming up soon. Um, <laughs> all right, go. the next question was um, all about. It's, it's from a VAR, and it's what happens when my client wants to upgrade their ERP? Yep. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, let's take the example of I'm upgrading on GP. What would happen in that case is eBridge has a product that is backwards compatible. Uh, so if the version, if we're, if we're jumping up, you know, a, a relatively small version, if you will, uh, the product's going to be backwards compatible. So what does that mean? Well, that does mean that A, uh, works best when the client says, listen, we're upgrading, and they give us the heads up, they give our support team the heads up, uh, we're able to prepare for that. Uh, as you know, think when upgrades happen, things can, they can break, right? So if we have the heads up, we'll give our, our team here uh, time to, to basically schedule in, okay, it's updating on this date, and then there's going to be some testing that may be involved if, uh, for example, if something does break, which it can, there's some testing that may need to happen, and then usually it's a tweak to get things going. But again, depending on how big of a jump, if you're really coming from an old version of GP to maybe the latest, 
that could be uh, a situation where we'd probably need to sit down and have a chat. If it's a smaller version upgrade, uh, then typically it works seamlessly. So uh, I, I hope that answers your question. And, and certainly if it doesn't, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to expand on that. All right, uh, the third question is, it seems like it's coming from an end user, and it says we're considering potentially building this in-house, um, but we're also considering um, an integration provider. So can you give me some tips? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. That's a really good question. In fact, uh, often what can happen is we will, uh, you know, we, we, we can sometimes in the sales cycle compete with those types of conversations, right, where someone's saying, hey, listen, uh, I want to keep this in-house. I think we can build it ourselves. And, um, you know, what, what's the advantage of eBridge? Uh, my, my hope was that as I walked you through the Blueprint Builder here, and, and hopefully you go to it afterwards and you're able to sort of browse it, you'll see that the advantage of bringing it to eBridge is we, out of the box, have you 70 or 80 percent of the way there. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you're running Magento, for example, eBridge within a relatively short period of time can take your Magento order, a standard order, and bring it through our platform down into GP to a standard order, uh, I would say in a couple of days, if not a day. So that can happen very fast. If you were to build this yourself, right, you are, you're basically building it custom. Uh, you are going to be dependent on the different people that are sort of managing it uh, they're in-house, and uh, with eBridge, we can, you know, we've got people here that support this product that are able to step in if there's a challenge or an issue, and again, we're able to deploy you out of the box with most of the standard functionality almost immediately. So uh, working through the customizations is where a lot of the detail is, but again, you're passing it to eBridge, we're taking it, we're running with it, we have a support team here of uh, five people in-house. Uh, it's 24 by 7 support, so we're able to help out, and we really take that headache away, right? Do we have folks that do it themselves? Absolutely we do. Uh, sometimes they come back and say, you know what, we hooked up Magento into GP, that worked great, now we need Amazon, now we need eBay, you know, now we need Jet.com or Walmart.com, right? And they start to realize that it, it really is something that is uh, an ongoing project and you need to be prepared for that. or you know, obviously you can, you can source it to us and uh, we'll simply just plug in the new platforms that we already support, so. Does that, does that answer the question? Yep, yep, definitely, Dave. Uh, all right, last one. There's actually a few more, but we're, we're gonna end with this last question and we'll get back to everyone over email for the others. Um, the last one is just about, uh, Dave, is there a way where we can go on and check what connectors eBridge has already built? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So I think what, what Lindsay, what you and I need to do as a follow-up is send uh, the link to that Blueprint Builder. The question was uh, version, like version specific. Yep, that's exactly right, Dave. I think, so what, what we should do is maybe we can send just a small, uh, just a, a short email that says, here's the Blueprint. Here are the you know, two or three steps you need to take in order to see if we support your version. And by all means, if you don't see it in the list, uh, absolutely feel free to reach out. I'm happy to, happy to help. And, and uh, you know, there really isn't a lot that we don't support. So um, happy to help. Uh, and, and I think, Lindsay, you and I should maybe just put a little uh, sample step. You know, here's the two, three steps you need to take for the Blueprint Builder in order to find out what version uh, you know, and if we support it. Great. Right. Well, that's all the guys, questions over here. Uh, Jason, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, do you see the poll? There, there was another polling question here. I, I see it on my screen. I'm hoping everybody else does, but uh, it, it's what is, what is your biggest challenge? And there's a couple yeah. of options there, and it'd be great. Uh, you know, I've spoke of a few, but uh, maybe there are others that uh, people are running into that I haven't touched on. So I did, I, I, that one was up for a while, Dave, and I, I brought it down a couple of minutes ago. Um, okay, no problem. But I can just, I can fill you in uh, for anyone curious. So uh, a third of people voted for too much data entry, but um, almost everyone else voted for other challenges. So I'm, I'm, I am oh, curious okay. what those other ones would be that weren't on the list. Uh, you know, feel free to yeah, put them in the chat if you're, if you're inclined. Uh, we're definitely curious. 
Yeah, absolutely. That, that's uh, my email's up there. Mark's email is up there as well. Uh, he's our partner manager, so we're we're happy to, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, some of the other uh, challenges that are that are being faced. I also want to remind uh, everyone on the line that, that we do have a very quick survey that that should pop up after you depart today. It just takes uh, 20 seconds or so to, to fill out and just give a bit of additional feedback of your experience today, what you thought of the session, uh, your technical experience with WebEx. Uh, we always appreciate uh, that feedback as well. Uh, well, Dave, I think we are going to wrap up here. Uh, we did record today's event, so uh, we'll be sharing that as well in, uh, in the next few days. And uh, with that, uh, Dave, thank you so much for taking the time and Lindsay for moderating the questions. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. With that, we're going to end today's event. Thank you, thank you everybody. Have a great day. Take care, everybody.